Hey Bash fam! In today's tutorial, I'll be talking about how to use our Passion Planner digital files in the app Notability. So Notability is a note-taking app that is available on iOS, so you can go ahead and go on over to your app store and pay a one-time fee to purchase this app. Today I will be demonstrating on an iPad Pro, so let's go ahead and dive in. So today I'll be talking about how to navigate the app itself and our planner within Notability. And then I'll talk about the different tools that you can use in the app. Then I'll move on to how do you add our digital stickers and inserts into Notability. And then lastly, I'll talk about how to add planner pages in the app. So before we get started, if you need some help with downloading and importing your files onto your device and then importing into Notability, I would first watch our video, how to import your digital files, which you can find on our IGTV page or our YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, first let's talk about navigating Notability. Now, when you first open up the app, this is what your screen will look like. And this is your note library. So this will show all the notes you've imported. So you can see that I have my daily, my weekly, and then another weekly within my app. If you look over to the left here, you can actually add subjects and dividers to organize your planners better. So to do that, you would click on this plus symbol and you can either add a subject or divider. So here I've added a planner subject and within that subject, I have my dailies and my weeklies. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my daily now. Now, first off, let's talk about the hyperlinks. So there are hyperlinks throughout your planner that when clicked on will lead you to their corresponding page. For example, if I click on the roadmap, this will lead me to my passion roadmap. But let's talk about how to activate these hyperlinks. Now you can actually use any of the tools you see here, except for the text tool to actually tap on these. So for example, if I have the pen tool selected and I just tap on this tab, it will go to my year at a glance. But if I actually don't tap and if I you know, move my pen or something, that is when it'll use the actual tool. I like to use this hand icon here because it's specifically for navigating around your page. If you'd like to know a little bit more about all the different hyperlinks that you can find in our planners, I would again go to our IGTV and watch our options for your passion planner in digital. Now that we've talked about the hyperlinks, let's go ahead and just talk about general navigation. So to zoom into your planner, you would use two fingers and then expand them. And then to zoom out, you would pinch two fingers together. You can use your finger to kind of navigate around the page, but again, you could also use this hand icon here to move the page around as well. Now, the default setting for Notability is for you to view your file, or in this case, your planner, as one seamless page, meaning that if I just swipe up or down, this is how I can get through my planner pages, but personally, I don't really prefer that. I prefer to be able to flip through my pages like a book horizontally. And so to change that, you're gonna go ahead and click on these three dots, click view, and then click single page. And now if I swipe right or swipe left, that is how I can get through individual pages in my planner. Another way you can flip through individual pages in your planner is by, um, if you look over in this bottom right corner of your screen, you'll see that this is your actual page number that you're on. And if you click on this up arrow or down arrow, you can flip between individual pages like that. You'll also notice this button here, this arrow. This is your back button. So this, when clicked on, will take you to the last hyperlink that you clicked. And I'd like to differentiate that because if I flip through individual pages and then I click back, it's not gonna just take me back to the page I flipped from. But let's say that I click on Wednesday, and then I click on Sunday, and then I click on Roadmap. So if I click back, it's going to take me to Sunday and then Wednesday. Okay, next let's talk about your page navigator. So if you look at the top right corner of your screen, you'll see this icon here. And when clicked on, this will open up your navigator. So this first tab here just shows you your planner all in thumbnails. So I could just scroll through and the page that I'm currently on will be highlighted in blue. I can navigate to different pages by just scrolling and tapping on the thumbnails. Now you'll notice in the bottom left corner of each thumbnail, there are these three dots. So if you click on them, you can actually do a couple different things. You could cut pages, you can copy pages, um, you can clear a page or delete a page. Now, 
we recommend you don't delete any of the original pages in your planner as this can cause the hyperlinks to no longer work. But I will get into copying and pasting pages a little later when I talk about adding pages. But this is pretty handy. If I want to just erase this whole page, I can just press clear page. In this tab here, this is where you can also move pages. So to do that, I would long press on a thumbnail until it pops out like that. And I could just drag it around to wherever I want it to be. This next tab here will show you all of the notes that you've edited. So it won't include any of the blank pages like over here. It's only going to choose the ones that you've actually written on or added images or text to. I think this comes in handy personally because sometimes I don't want to flip through every single hundred plus thumbnails in my planner. So I can just look at the ones that I've actually used in this tab. Next up, we have our bookmarks tab. So I'm going to go back to thumbnail view over here and you'll notice in the top right corner of each thumbnail, there's a little flag icon. So if you tap on that, that actually bookmarks that page. So to find all of my bookmark pages, I would click on this icon here. Next up, we have the magnifying glass here, which is your search function. So with this search function, you can search any text that is typed out into your planner. And if you would like it to also search through your handwriting, um, usually if you open this up, there will be a button that you can click down here that says learn more if you want to convert your handwriting into text and you would pay, I think it's about 99 cents for that feature. Personally though, I don't find it always reliable when I'm trying to look for handwriting because everyone's handwriting is so different and it can sometimes be hard to read. So if I do wanna use the search function, I try to type out the text itself. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and close this up by clicking on this icon again. And then lastly, for navigation, let's talk about the note switcher. So if you drag your finger from the left side of your screen, like so, you'll pull out this note switcher. Now this first tab will show you all of your recently opened notes. And I could switch between my different planners this way. But this really comes in handy. Let's say I want to split screen between my daily and my weekly planner. So I would open up the note switcher and then whichever other planner I want to open, I'm going to click on these three dots and click view on left or right. It doesn't matter. And now I can view both planners at the same time. Now to utilize that though, you would have to have opened it recently or you could search it if you'd like to as well. Now in split view like this, the window that is highlighted in blue is the one that you can actually edit. Watch as I try to use the highlighter in this planner, it's not gonna work. I would actually have to tap it first to make sure it's selected and then use it. And this comes in handy too. Let's say that I wanted to copy and paste my schedule into my weekly plan planner or vice versa. So I would use my lasso tool. And I'll get into this a little bit more later, but I would select, oops, I have to tap on this first. I would circle to select this handwriting and I would drag, oops, drag until it pops out like that and then drag it into my screen over here. And that is just a quick way to copy and paste between notes or in this case between planners. So to close that, you would just drag on this middle line here to the side to close up this window. All right, next, let's talk about the tools within Notability. So first off, you have the text tool here. So if you click on any of the tools twice, they actually have a couple more different options for you to choose from. Like I could draw a diagonal text box. If I click on that, if I draw diagonally, it will actually draw a more precise text box. But I think the default is for it to have that off. And when you just tap on your screen with a text tool, you can already start typing. Okay, so if you look down here, you can actually change the font settings. I could change the font itself over here. I could change the font size if I wanted to. The font color comes with a couple preset colors. You can bold, italicize, or underline your font. And then over here, there are these three letters um, with hearts around them. So this is where you can save some custom preset font settings. So let's say that I really like this font and this font size. I would long press on any of these letters here and then I would choose that font. So 
Let's go here. Long press again. Maybe I want this font color. And now, let's say I'm typing in some other font, but I decide, oh no, actually I want that font that I saved, so I would select it by tapping twice, and then I would select this letter. Now I can do that for all three of these, but if you look to the right over here, you have a couple different options. You can select the alignment of your text, but you can also create different lists. So you have a bulleted list, a number list, and you also have a checklist, which I really like because watch, when I close this, if I tap on that circle, it'll actually show the check mark for me. Now, if I want to edit text, I would have my text tool selected and tap on that text and you have a couple different options. I could click style if I want to change the font settings. I could also, oops. I could also cut, copy, delete this text if I wanted to. You would copy, long press, paste. But what you could also do, you have this option for paper. You can actually change the background of your text box so it's more like a sticky note. They have different patterns here for you to choose from and different colors as well. So that is your text tool. Next up, we have the pen tool here. So I'm gonna click on it again. And Notability comes with a couple of preset uh, pen widths for you, which you can choose from here. And if you look down here, there's a couple of different pen options as well. So the first one, which is the default, is a monoline pen, meaning no matter how hard or lightly I press down with my stylus, it's going to be the same pen width all throughout the stroke. But if I choose this next pen over here, this is actually pressure sensitive. So the harder I press down, the thicker the line will be, and the lighter I press, the thinner it'll be. And that really comes in handy if you like to do a lot of lettering or calligraphy. You have a couple more different options. So if I swipe to the left, you can actually oops, create a dashed line or you can create a dotted line. Over to our right, you have preset colors that Notability comes from for you to choose from. But if you swipe to the left, you have a couple gray boxes and this is where you can add in your own custom colors. So I'm gonna click on this plus sign and then from here, I could actually just like tap anywhere on the screen to, and drag it around to choose different shades. And then go down here and drag this around here to choose different colors. If you know the hex code of the color you wanna use, you can actually insert it right in there. But my favorite thing about this is that with Notability, you have this color eyedropper. So for me personally, I really like to match my pen colors and highlighter colors with my stickers. So that's where this comes in handy. I'll click on this eyedropper here and I will drag this kind of like circle target thing over the color that I want to use. And then you'll see the color selected in this check mark bubble here and I'll click on this check mark. And then you can also see that it gives you the actual hex code if you wanna use that later as well. But you'll click on that check mark and now it is added to my color palette. Now with Notability, let me show you. You can also create different shapes. And to do that, with my pen or my highlighter tool selected, I would create one stroke. So I would try to create a shape. And at the end of the stroke, I would press down on the screen and it will automatically try to create that shape. So for example, I'll draw a triangle. Actually, let me use the monoline though. So it's a little easier to see. And at the end, long press and it'll create my triangle and you can edit it by dragging these corners here. Moving on to the highlighter tool. Now this works exactly the same as the pen tool. You have different widths for you to choose from here. And then you have different highlighters. You have the pressure sensitive one, the dash and the dotted as well. You also have the same color palette if you wanna add more colors here. I can also create a straight line, let's say, with my highlighter tool, which I really like to do. So I'm going to create, let me make that thicker. <laughs> let's create 
create a line, long press, oops, and it creates, oh, I was in pressure sensitive, that's why. Let's try that again. So if I long press, it'll create a straight line for me. Now, moving on to your eraser tool. So there's a couple different settings here. You can erase whole or partial. Now, whole means, let me show you. If I drew a line, this is one stroke. It just means I don't take my stylus off of the screen. So with the whole eraser selected, if I just go over a little part of the stroke, it will erase the whole thing. Now with partial selected, if I go over a little part of it, it'll only erase the parts that I'm actually moving my pencil over. Now you have different eraser widths to choose from. If you have your eraser tool selected and it's set on whole, and let's say I want to erase the highlighter here, but I don't actually want to erase the handwriting as well. So you would just have eraser tool, hole, and then go over it with the eraser. Okay, next up we have the lasso tool here. Now you can select with the lasso tool freehand or rectangularly. So freehand means I can just select with whatever shape I choose or rectangularly. I'm gonna draw diagonally a little rectangle here. Now I like to use freehand for the most part, but let me show you a couple different things the lasso tool can do. So if I want to select handwriting, anything I've written down with the pen or the highlighter tool, I would just circle that handwriting and then I could move it. I would drag that selection around. If I could tap on it, I could actually change the style. So I could change the pen width from here, the color. If I tap on it again, I could duplicate it easily. I could delete my handwriting. I could copy. Now to copy handwriting, you would just draw a circle around it and I'll tell you why this is important to know later. Click copy and then click paste. Now if I click, if I long press and click paste image, this is actually going to uh, paste a screenshot of whatever I copied, meaning that you can see the background of the selection that I copied a while ago. Now let's say, I'm gonna select this again. Let's say I wanted to rotate this, so you would take two fingers and then just put it on your selection and rotate like so, or you could expand to make it bigger or pinch to make the handwriting smaller. Now if I want to select an image, it's different. So like I told you, with a handwriting, you would circle it. If I try to do that with an image, actually let's use one that's only an image, and if I try to move it, it's not going to select the photo. You would have to actually tap it to select it. And then from here, I could crop an image. So you would drag on these corners here to crop it. Let's tap on it again. You could also cut, copy, and delete your image as well. Now, if I try to copy this by selecting it, by drawing around it and clicking copy, if I long press and click paste, image is your only option. And it's going to give you a screenshot of that photo and whatever was behind it. Okay, another cool thing about the lasso tool. So let's say that I have layered these stickers on top of each other. Whichever sticker I want to be on top or image, I would just tap on it with my lasso tool. Uh, and let me also show you. So I have handwriting overlaid over the sticker here. So like I said, if you want to select the handwriting, you would just circle it and I could move the handwriting like so. Now moving on, we have this hand icon, which I mentioned a while ago, and this is just to move and navigate around your page or you can use it for your hyperlinks. Okay. Let me go back a little bit. So this button over here is your undo button. So say I write this, but I wanna undo it. You just tap on this. And then if you want to redo that action, you would long press and click redo. Now, a shortcut for this is actually putting three fingers on your screen and swiping to the left to undo and three fingers and to the right to redo. All right, so next up, we have this microphone icon here, and this is for you to record audio. So if you tap on it, it will start recording and say that I'm writing something while I'm recording. I'm going to click on this to stop the recording. 
and then to watch that or sorry to play that recording you're going to click on this down arrow here and click play start recording and say that i'm writing something while i'm recording and if you noticed the handwriting will actually animate along with your recording so this will really come in handy if you are in school and want to record some notes for your classes or maybe you're in a meeting and you want to record something um, I think that would be really handy for those cases. So if you want to edit any of your recordings, you'll click on this icon and you can edit or if I swipe to the left, I can delete a recording. Okay, next up we have this icon here and this is your add media tool. So I can add, let's say a photo from my photo library here or I can add a photo from my camera from the device itself Next up, you can actually scan a document and have that inserted straight into your planner. This one's fun, so you can add a GIF. So let's say I searched planning <laughs> and just tap on one of these so I can insert a GIF into my planner, which is pretty fun. I do have to advise though, if you add a bunch of GIFs into a page, it is possible that your app may lag. Okay, next up we have web clips. So this one's really fun. If I tap on this, it will tell me directions about how to add a web, a web click into my planner. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up a Safari and let's say, for example, I am on the Passion Planner blog page and I really like, let's say this blog right here. And I would like to add sort of like a web clip or a link to this page in my planner. Now, first, what I would do is I would split view Safari with Notability, and we actually have a tutorial for that. It's under our Reels. It's a, a hack of how to split view. So what you're gonna do is you're going to drag up from the bottom of your screen, and this will show you your recently opened apps. Now, since I just had Notability open, it's over here, so I'm going to long press until it pops out like this and drag it to the side of my screen. Now that this is in split view mode, I'm going to um, long press on the URL here. Oops. Long press until it pops out like that. And I'm going to drag it straight into my planner here. Now it will show me a little preview of the link that I just dragged in here. I'm going to go ahead and close this actually by dragging on this middle bar. And this will also take a screenshot of wherever you are scrolled to on the page. So let's say I wanted to use this graphic as my link. So I would just make sure that's in frame. Now click save and now I have this web clip here. So I don't want this whole thing in my planner. I just want the graphics. So I'm going to click crop and I'll drag this like so. Click okay. And now I have this graphic in here, but to actually activate it, say I wanted to go back to that article. Let's see. I would have my lasso tool selected and then I would tap on it and click edit clip and it will open up that web page for me. Okay, and then lastly over here, you can add stickies. Now this is basically adding a sticky note into your planner. So you can choose their different backgrounds for you to choose from, let's say a grid one. So I would just expand it by dragging this corner here into whatever size I need it to be. And you could always change it by clicking paper and then again, choosing from those different patterns and textures. Okay, next up, let's talk about your zoom window. So if I zoom in on my planner page here, this is as far as I can zoom in. But if I click on this magnifying glass here, this is my zoom window. And if I tap on the screen, anything that's highlighted in this blue area here is what will be zoomed in over here. So if I drag this corner, I can actually make it smaller, meaning it will zoom in even further. So if you drag these lines over here, I can actually move the zoom window. And I really like to use this when I write just because the closer I am zoomed into the page, the neater I write typically. Okay, now if I wanna close that, I would just tap on this icon again. Okay, lastly, for the tools, I'm gonna to talk about your favorite toolbar here. So. If you notice, if I tap on the pen tool, for example, you'll notice there's this um, button here, favorites. So 
Let's say that I use the same pen all the time. It's um, this width and it's black and I want to make sure that's added into my favorite. So with that, actually let's make it blue and I would click on the favorites button there and now those settings are saved into my favorite toolbar. So I could easily just jump to my favorite highlighter colors that I usually use from this toolbar here. Because if you look in your highlighter tool, there's also the favorites button and it's under your eraser tool as well. Now, if you want to move this around, you could actually hold down on this bar here and move it around your screen. If you want to exit it, you can just click on this X and if you want it to reappear, you would just tap on this star icon. Okay, so next up, let's talk about adding our Passion Planner digital stickers and inserts into Notability. So first up, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Files app because this is where my downloads are. So I'm gonna click on my bundle over here. Again, this is under the assumption that you've already downloaded and unzipped your files. So all of our digital planner purchases come with a Ready, Set, Grow sticker book, which will open here. And this might even look a little bit different, uh, differently than yours because this is the 2021 annual bundle. So I'm gonna click on that though. And there are two different zip files here. One ends with PNGs and you can't really see it, but this one ends in GoodNotes. Since we're using an app other than GoodNotes, we are only going to use this PNGs file. So you're gonna tap on it to unzip it. And then we'll open up this PNGs folder. And now from here, you can see all the sticker sheets within the sticker book as individual PNGs. From here, I'm going to split view notability. So I'm gonna drag this bar up and I'm going to drag my notability icon to the side here. From here, let's go ahead and find the sticker that we want to use. Let's say it's this one. So I'm gonna go back so I can see it as a thumbnail and I'm gonna drag the thumbnail of that sticker sheet, long press and then drag it so it pops out right into Notability. And then from here, I'm gonna have my lasso tool selected and close this for now. Okay, so I'm gonna tap on this image with my lasso tool and click crop. And then actually, let's say I wanna use this sticker here. So I'm gonna drag these corners to crop my image so it only is selecting this sticker here and I'll click okay. And now I have my sticker added. Now that's one way to add our digital stickers. Um, someone else has suggested a different way. So let's say I dragged and dropped that sticker sheet into my planner. And let's make it easier. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Um, you, you may have noticed that you can only crop rectangularly. And if you want to sort of crop um, freehand, I'm gonna move this. And with my lasso tool selected, remember I can just outline this, but since it's an image, let me show you, I'll click copy. And when I long press and click paste, it's only going to have pasted a screenshot of that image. Now, if that doesn't really matter to you that much, um, you could paste it, drag the sticker sheet onto maybe like a blank area and copy from there, but you'll just have a white background behind your sticker. So as of right now, our stickers and inserts are only pre-cropped using GoodNotes, but if you do happen to have GoodNotes and Notability both on your iPad, I will show you a little trick. So I'm going to split view GoodNotes with Notability. And then if you've already imported your stickers using maybe our tutorial into GoodNotes, you're going to open up a sticker book and then select your lasso tool. And then, oops. I'll go ahead and select a sticker by just circling a part of it. I'll long press and drag it straight into my planner. And that way I don't have to crop them because they are already pre-cropped. So in the future, we do hope to optimize our files for all digital planner users so that you can use them no matter what app you're using. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. Now the same thing goes for our inserts. Let me pull that up and you only will have our inserts if you purchase our, any of our digital bundles. So let's click on the inserts folder. I'll click on the one that ends with PNGs. Open up that folder and then I will split view, notability, long press, drag. 
and then from here let's say that I want um, this habit tracker in there I will long press on its thumbnail until it pops out and then drop it straight into my planner there and I could resize it or delete it okay now lastly let's talk about adding pages into your planner now this is probably one of my favorite things about digital planning because essentially you could add in an infinite amount of pages into your planner and you can add them wherever you want um, unlike our paper planners they don't have to all just be in the back so to do that let's say that i wanted to add one of our dot pages because if you'll notice there are these tabs here you have a blank page a dot page and a grid page that you can actually make duplicates of and that is how you essentially add pages into your planner so with the dot page opened up i'm going to open up my page navigator here and then i'm going to go to my thumbnail view and my page is highlighted in blue and from here i'm going to click on those three dots and i'll click copy and let's say for this example i just want the duplicate page to go right after the original so i'm going to click on those three dots again and i'll click paste now you should know that anytime you copy a page, if it's bookmarked, it will also bookmark that duplicated page as well. So if you look, I now have another dotted page here. The reason why I like to bookmark these pages is because that way I'll know that they're the original pages and I won't delete them because I really like to duplicate these blank pages and then I'll move them around in my planner and sometimes I can't tell which is the original page. One hack though to know which is the original is the hyperlinks will only go to the original page. So if I tap here, this is the original, this is the original page. Now, let's say I actually wanted to copy a dotted page after this daily layout. So I would open up Page Navigator and go to this page's thumbnail, click on those three dots and click paste. And you see how it's, it's also bookmarked, so I'm going to uncheck that bookmark there. And that is how to add pages into your planner. So that about covers up how to use our Passion Planner digital files in Notability. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in a comment below. But if you do have any more questions that are a little bit more technical, we do recommend that you go to the Notability website to their support page and ask them. There. If you have any other hacks that you like to use yourself in Notability, also leave that in a comment below. 